Hey guys, welcome back. We have a laundry list of boat projects to get through and only five days to do it in. And we just found out that our clock started yesterday when we got hauled out of the water. So that gives us four days left to finish everything that we want to get done. So it's time to get our butts in gear if we want to get everything completed. So let's get started. We made it! <laughs> I don't know how, but we made it. <laughs> and I'm not getting stuck blue again. So I am totally gloved up, hooded mask, glasses, old glasses, because I'm not going to wreck my new ones again. <laughs> Sexy, hey? Mm -hmm. It's so hot. Make some drugs. <laughs> this was brand new a year ago. We scraped it down pretty good. Got all the heavy stuff off. I'm just going to do a quick muriatic acid clean on it. It should be shiny and new. It's hot. It's hot. It's so hot. Uh, not bad though. I'm almost to the beginning of the keel. Maybe a little bit into it. <laughs> but killed one battery already. Hopefully uh, they charge fast because otherwise it's going to be a long go. But it's not bad. It's really coming off pretty quickly and easily. And I think if we have battery power, we're going to get it done in one day. Maybe a day and a half. Perfect. I'm being ambitious, but I'm, I'm feeling it. Awesome. Yeah. It's going good. It's warm though. I don't want to go do the other side because the sun is coming this direction. So the shade is really nice right now. And the breeze is actually not bad it over is. here. This is a comfortable temperature. Yeah. But as soon as you step right here, it's 5,000 degrees. <laughs> yeah, it's so, crazy the difference, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I'm, I'm not looking forward to going no. to the other side. Might have to do that one early in the morning or at night. Yeah. On the That's other what side. I'm yeah. Yeah. No point in killing yourself. It is. Carry on, love. Got on it. Get over there and get it done. <laughs> and this sucker's getting close to being done. Oh, that A looks couple great, more blades babe. to go. Good, man. What's uh, the update there, Captain? Just uh, scrubbing. Lots of scrubbing. Lots of scrubbing. We're getting rid of some major stains that we've had forever on the side of the boat. Yeah. This From our big black. engine issue, yeah. we had an uh, exhaust stain, I guess, coming yeah. out of these ports forever, and we couldn't get it off no matter how hard we tried. Yeah. But uh, you got her today. I did. I'm so happy it's off. It looks so much better. Yeah. I got a quickie shower. <laughs> I was so blue. Uh, so Josh gave me some soap and the hose and I got squirted off down here at the boat. But a lot got done. We've got this whole side pretty much sanded all the way into the middle. There's a little bit more that needs to be done. So I think we're going to call it a day for this sanding aspect. And then uh, we got to start working on the anchor locker so we make sure we get that done in time. But all in all, a really good day today. I think we made a lot of progress. It's hot, so it's nice being on the shaded part here. But uh, we're going to have to get in the sun tomorrow and get the rest of this stuff done. So now that this is all nice and new and pretty, we thought we'd better make it all nice and pretty down in there. So I'm going to do some sanding and some cleanup in there. And then uh, we're going to repaint the whole thing with uh, some nice slippery hard paint. So any dirt or junk that gets in here will just flow right out and keep things clean and fresh. So it's a 
one to one of the epoxy resin and the fast hardener. And then you want to put enough of the adhesive filler in to give it a bit of a paste sort of thickness, more like icing. This one's a little too thin still. Because you still want to be able to paint it on with a brush. And you mix it up. There we go, that looks good. So kind of like this consistency. It's not totally watery, it's a little bit thick, so it's gonna stick when you put it on. Something we've learned along the way when it comes to mixing epoxies and resins is to buy small paper plates. That way you don't make too big of a batch for an application. As well, we like to use popsicle sticks for stirring. They're super cheap and friendlier on the environment. Unfortunately, we couldn't find them, so we had to opt for the plastic ones, not my favorite. Here go, baby. Thank you. I need a paper towel again. Okay. All right, last one. Awesome. Okay, it is tight in here. Yeah, sweet. That is preventative measures right there. See all the brown stuff that we put on there, that is our west system. We've done a whole layer of it on here, all the way right down to the bottom. She's a dirty room, but it's gonna be fucking span awesome in a little bit, right baby? Yeah, it is. I gotta get out of here, oh my God. <laughs> You're so squishy in there. Here. <laughs> I'm always in this hole. <laughs> you like being in the anchor locker. Apparently. <laughs> Let's see the contortionist in action. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, my legs are shaking. <laughs> that was in there for like 40 minutes. Maybe not that long. No, not that long. Half an hour. Yeah. You can just throw that overboard. I've got all the garbage down there. Okay. Overboard it is. Yeah. Come on, yoga master. Yeah. Watch this. Yeah. <laughs> Shoes off because they're dirty. Yep. Oh. We're so crazy here. <laughs> Don't get your dirty feet on the boat. No. <laughs> well done, baby. You did it. That feels good. Yes. That's going to be solid in there. Awesome. Can't wait. It was solid already, but now it's going to be. I can't yeah. wait until it's all painted and pretty. Yeah. Oh. Pretty Let's like get you. some beer now. You're done. Hope you like this episode. Please comment, but just say nice things because I'm too tired to deal with bad things. Good morning, crew. We are now day two on the hard. Uh, day one was a bit of a write-off. We were supposed to get hauled first thing in the morning and it turned out that uh, we got hauled last. So we were in here all chalked and ready to go about 3 30, 4 o'clock. So there wasn't a whole lot of action that happened that day. We did get the chain out of the anchor locker and got that all taken care of and let that dry out for the night. Then day one, the next day was crazy. Uh, I got half of the boat, the bottom sanded. Josh got the whole anchor locker prepared, uh, cleaned out, and then we did a quick west system on the wall that comes in towards the boat. So it's not really a bulkhead, it's just a wall that separates the anchor locker from the boat and then the bulkheads behind that. Uh, like we said, hunters are notorious for having a leak in that spot and we wanted to make sure that it was just nice and tight because there is a little bit of standing water that sits down there and we wanted to make sure that that didn't come into the boat and wreck the bulkhead. On top of that, we got the prop completely clean, the shaft clean. We've got someone coming today to clean the cutlass bearings uh, it's, and all the stains off the side of the boat, those awful stains that we had on the side uh, from our exhaust issues with the engine. So it was a pretty chaotic day. We ended up eating two scoops of peanut butter <laughs> because we were so busy all day long, that's all we had. So we had amazing burgers for dinner at night and crashed really early. Now we're into the third day here and it's time to finish up the rest of the stuff. Uh, I've got the other half of the boat to sand. Josh is doing work with the gentleman for the cutlass bearing. Then we have to paint the anchor locker, paint the chain and mark it, and then wax the next day. So. Let's get this party started. We're almost done. Check out this piece of bling, hey? 
I mean this piece of bling. Hey. <laughs> we are changing our cutlass bearing this morning. They got a tech coming over this morning who's going to help us. Uh, they got a hydraulic press and I'll show you what that looks like. It's in the hanger and it holds the shaft. Ours has got some play in it. When you're moving it, it should have no play. So they actually have a press that they put on the shaft that will push in from behind and push the old one right out and then we'll do the same to install this one. What's cool about these is when you're looking at um, uh, which one to replace or uh, put in your um, hanger, they come in different sizes and stuff, but to make it easy, they've systemized it across the marine world, so this one actually has the name Bind. So if you look at the end of the box there, Bind. And so if you know which one it is, you just look for the name of it, and then it's kind of a good way of systemizing the whole thing and keeping it simple for everybody. There's only a few different ones you can get. I think there's what we saw in the store was maybe about 12 different ones. There's some other ones that are in metric and they're different, but for the most part, they all have a name and they all go by uh, imperial measurement. So this guy should be here soon. I've just got the whole thing prepped, the props off, anodes are off. There's two little uh, grub screws, uh, hex grub screws that go in and just kind of keep it in place after. I pulled those this morning. It's all ready to go. And we're just waiting on Vincent to show it from the yard. How's your shoulders today? Oh, they're so fantastic. Yeah, it's fun yeah. working over your head with a five pound sander. Hey? Yeah, at least it's better than hand sanding, so. Yeah. That's good. This is a interesting little bit we got here. We're going to have to definitely put some uh, primer on that and yeah. really beef it up a little bit. It's good though. It's the barrier's still there. We'll just put a primer yeah. coat on it and then start building it up. The problem is there's hard paint underneath of this and it's years of hard paint. We need to really take it all the way down to barrier and redo it. So these chunks are not a structural thing. It's just the hard paint flaking off. So it's just something we're gonna have to do every year until we actually take it down to barrier. Yeah. So. yeah, once the first layer of adhesion lets go, it just starts breaking down and yeah. this is what we deal with. Yep. But it's Anyways, all good. Back to work. Get at it. Yes, sir. We got the whole team over here. This is cool having these guys show up with this big contraption to pull this thing out. It's awesome. It's okay, you go right ahead. Okay. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back. Thank you so much for sending us all of your questions. They were super fun to go through. Totally. We've uh, kind of compiled them all into a file now so that uh, we can look at them and make sure that we get them all answered and we don't miss any along the way. And we're going to go through a couple of them today. So uh, We filtered a couple out that were just like, <laughs> whoa, too much. Way too much, yeah. <laughs> But keep the questions coming. We uh, we love to see them and we can't wait to answer them for you. Um, one of the biggest questions that we have been getting lately is about our citizenship. Uh, it seems that a little confusing, I can imagine. So uh, everyone's asking, are you Canadians or American? Why do you fly an American flag if you are Canadians? Well, we are <coughs> dual citizens. So. Uh, I recently became an American about two and a half years ago, roughly, mm -hmm. something like that, two years ago. Uh, my mom and dad grew up in Southern California, and I was born in Canada, raised in Canada, American parents. So I applied for my citizenship, and uh, I'm now a proud American. Yes, you which are. Which is super cool. <laughs> and I was born in the States, uh, in Pennsylvania, and we moved to Canada when I was quite young and I was there long enough and became a citizen so it makes it really easy for us to travel uh, in Canada you can only be in the States for a certain amount of time before you have to go back again you get six months yes and this way it gives us the opportunity to be in Canada or the US as long as we want so yeah, we get an indefinite amount of time and one of the beautiful things about that whole thing working out the way it did is we purchased our boat in, in uh, the east coast of the US and it was already registered in the US so we re-registered it with the Coast Guard there so we have a Coast Guard registered American vessel and we're Canadians yes so that's the long short answer of that one <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite Anchorage Ooh, that's tough because we've seen a lot of cool stuff in mm -hmm. the last couple of years and what I if think we do like one two three go uh, okay 
Okay. Yeah. One, two, three, go. Bekwa. <laughs> We're both going to say Bekwa. That's funny. Um, we. It's really hard because it's a. It's kind of a loaded question mm -hmm. in some ways because we've had some incredible adventures in the Bahamas and you cannot beat the water in the Bahamas. No. Like it is spectacular. Yes. The land and the diversity in the Caribbean is so much different. Like every island you go to is completely different. Uh, the language is, the, they're the different countries. The topography, everything's just different about mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. um, whereas Bahamas, it's kind of, they're, they're, they're low lying mountains. It's very flat, um, but the water there is, oh, it's unbelievable. Yes. It's like it's like sailing in a pool. It is, 100% yeah. it is. And yeah. in the Caribbean, you get anchorages like that, but it's not it's consistently not the same. like that. Yeah, so. yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is your monthly budget living on your boat? That's actually, we are going to have an episode coming out in the near future about our budget mm -hmm. and our whole cruising plan. Um, we are too young to be completely retired, but uh, we planned this out and with a, a uh, sort of idea in mind of how far we could get before we have to either go back to work or settle in wherever we end up. Yes. Um, but right now, our monthly budget literally is to spend as little as possible. We don't uh, go to marinas. We try to stay on the hook as much as possible. Uh, we don't visit lots of restaurants and things like that it's it's a lot of cooking here on hanu um and just try to keep it as as budget effective as we possibly can so that we can continue on this lifestyle for as long as we can because we don't want it to end anytime no, soon. no we're having the best time yes, so yeah it's a good motivator to uh really watch your pennies yes exactly so stay tuned <laughs> that episode's coming up soon it'll give you a little bit more insight of what our cruising budget looks like and it's so hard to manage because the boat's the most expensive part of this. <laughs> yes, it is. At least it has been for us. I mean, yeah. we, we've repaired a lot of things in the last year, yes. two years. So. And they always come up at the worst possible time, which is true for anybody. Yeah, like in your house, you need to replace a thing, hot yeah. water tank. Nobody was planning to place a hot water tank. So, you know, things like that. It's just uh, yeah. the surprises. The surprises. Yeah. Anyway, so that more on that one in the future, future here. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Uh, this one I love. Okay, so Hanu Time. This is from uh, our buddy Husketeer. Uh, the Hanu Time riff, that's something that was that put together by Josh and your Yuki. No. <laughs> I'm not that good. <laughs> he tries. I try. You don't practice enough. I don't. And I thought when we moved on to the boat that I would be playing it every single day. And I think the first couple months that we were here, I, I picked it up and we actually have it hung in a spot so I can't miss it grabbing yeah. it. And I do pick it up here and there. Every time I walk by, I yeah. play something and put it back. But I need to spend more time on it. So, no, I didn't come but up with good. that song. But it's a great <laughs> song. I love it. It's our song. <laughs> and then the next question which is i find hilarious and it's the most asked question and people are really worried about this <laughs> what's going on with your hair <laughs> are you cutting it are you leaving it long what's the deal man <laughs> well you know what it's uh, i'm having fun with it so being in a corporate job for a bunch of years i had a pretty specific look that i tried to maintain and i'm just having fun and this is my hairdresser too so don't offend her um, <laughs> <clears throat> that's interesting actually we've been asked that who does your hair how does that work we cut each other's hair that's how it works on the boat you back just, to the budget you back to the budget yeah. yeah so we've gotten very good at very low-key hairstyles and uh, just trusting your partner to be able to cut a straight line <laughs> yeah and this has been getting fun honestly yeah it has yeah we I was yeah. a little iffy at it in the beginning but uh, it's getting a little crazy yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's so good. nice I can put it up now and it stays up and yeah i don't know so kung, the verdict kung fu is man bun but <laughs> the verdict is what's going on with the hair no idea <laughs> <laughs> just gonna let it go <laughs> let it go let it grow let it flow yeah and one day i'm gonna get just bananas over it and buzz it all off so be too hot yeah, yeah. you just can't get off <laughs> Uh, okay, so um, then um, Michelle was asking us about captain's license. Do we have captain's license and are classes mandatory to go out sailing? And the answer to that is no. We don't have our captain's license and you do not have to take any classes to get out and sail. 
it's not like a driver's license or anything like that. You just kind of take no. your life in your hands and you do your thing. So sidebar to that is we do think that it's very, very uh, helpful to take classes. Um, Tamara's folks did all the ASA training and honestly, it, it propelled them past what we were for sailors and mm -hmm. we were self-taught. Um, so we do recommend it. 100% yes. I mean, it would be nice to know, we know how to do, to sail our boat, but it would be nice to know the little tips and tricks to do it more effectively than the way that we probably safer. do it. And safer. So, yeah. yeah. We, we do have all the ASA manuals and we have been reading them. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, we haven't taken the courses, but we are self-teaching ourselves the ASA courses. Yes. And one other thing that we've uh, got to share dun, with dun, you. Dun, 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 dun. We both just started our U.S. Coast Guard <laughs> captain's licenses. So this is just recent, actually, in the next, last couple of weeks. So hopefully in the next six months, both of us will be certified as 50 or 100 ton captains. Yeah, so that's super exciting. So yeah. it's not mandatory that you take them, but it's something that we want to do for ourselves just to be prepared and to know all the things that you need out And you here. know what? Every little bit of thing that you can add to your resume mm -hmm. helps when you're looking for insurance. That can be one of the hardest things to do, especially if you have a really, really expensive boat. Yes, it's yeah. true. Yeah. They want to mm -hmm. see a history of what you've done, how you've done it, uh, logs, ocean time, all of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we've been fortunate that we've been able to maintain our insurance and, and have logged a ton and ton of miles. And Tamara has religiously filled out our logbook after every single time we moved the boat so yes. we have we're very dedicated on maintaining all that stuff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you have to be mm -hmm. awesome well thank you guys so much for uh putting your questions in for us and uh we will continue to answer them it's uh, it's a lot of fun just uh i guess sharing with you what you want to know about us we're, we're enjoying that so yeah. don't forget to send us your questions and uh we'll keep doing this as long as you want us to Mm -hmm. So like, subscribe, do the things, share us with your friends, <laughs> share us around. <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> All right, guys, have a great night. We'll talk later. to you later. Bye. Back to the show. Baby. Yeah, it's cool. There's like two hydraulic rams on either side and it's compressing like this and it pushes a sleeve in that actually just slide the bushing right out. Um, and these guys are being really careful so nothing gets damaged. So he's just taking his time and making adjustments and it's cool. It's a neat tool. Yeah. Hydraulics are amazing. It's the amount of force and power you can get out of a pumping a bit of oil. It's just basically a big bottle jack with two rams that just slowly push it out. Stop. So we got a little bit of progress, but not enough. We're having trouble. It's getting bound up in there. So we're trying a bunch of different ways. We've been heating it. We just went to get a picking tool to see if there's any junk in there that's maybe binding it up. But it's being a challenge, and we really don't want to pull the shaft. So he's working hard at trying to make it work. Update you when we get it out. So after half a day of uh, the gentleman here trying to help us get the uh, bearing pressed out, it's a no-go. It will not budge. So our next option is I'm going to take the strut off. Something I didn't even think about, but I'm not excited about either because it's underneath between the two beds. So I'm going to have to wrestle a bunch of stuff out of here, get in underneath and just start unbolting things. And then we'll clean it all up, 5200 it, put it back in. Oh, excuse me, it's been a day already. You can hear the grinding. Tamara's still just pumping away down there. I gotta get changed so I don't make a mess inside the boat and get unbolting this sucker. This is what day two looks like. Hi, baby. Oh, you must be exhausted. Oh, I'm like, I'm just in it to win it now. I, I hurt everywhere. I have no strength in my arms and it just doesn't matter. It's getting done. Getting it done. I'm going to have to interrupt you while I'm doing this real quick. That's okay. So we're going to re-bed this with 5200. Which isn't a bad thing. We can clean it all up properly. But this way we can drop this, press this bearing out with this off of the boat. Won't damage the shaft. Um, and everything will just be tickety-boo, right? 
Are we worried that there was any damage to the shaft already? No, the guy was very careful. As soon as it started moving, he stopped. And you know, I'm glad because if it was me, I probably would have kept trying to push, but you showed me what he was watching for and it, it was pretty good what he was doing. So, I'm gonna start with a heat gun. Because it's too hot. Yeah, it's warm. Here. There we go. Just Ugh. like that. And that's why it wouldn't come out. It's destroyed inside. Look at that mess. You can't see what we've got tight. Okay. Yeah. That's why it wasn't coming Holy out. Holy crap, that's a mess in there. Yeah, there's nothing left. It was worn right out. Yeah. That's right. All right. Go get the bearing changed. Uh, I basically have cut this in three places and now I'm just folding it into an origami so I can push it out them and then get it over to the shop before they leave for the day so they can press the new one in. Sounds like fun, right? Looks like it's coming along smashingly. It is. Yeah, we're almost there. Success. I got the old turd out. I'm going to run over and take it to the shop and get them to press the new one in and we can put this sucker back together tonight. Yes. Yay team. Yay team, go. Hello. That's the new one. She's pressed in place. Time to glue this baby, this baby back up and get it back together. Day's getting long, really long. It's tiring. But I don't need to talk about tiring when we got this one hand sanding because the batteries can't keep up with her, right? <laughs> huh. Gotta get it done. Gotta get it done before the mosquitoes come out. Look at that folks, she's on, she's sealed, never to come off again, we hope. Let this be a lesson, change your cutlass bearing regularly or you have some real work to do.